You know, if you clicked on this video, it is probably because you're curious how to record Clubhouse or why I think Clubhouse has enormous value today. First, if Clubhouse had come out in 2019, it may not have blown up as quickly as it has. But sometimes the perfect thing happens at the most ideal time. In 2020, a lot of creators across the world during the pandemic had to shelter within their own homes. Many of us have spent our entire social media lives communicating with each other through photographs, online groups, texts, websites, and however else we communicate. But if we were lucky enough, maybe we'd also meet each other through the occasional photography conference or two. However, in 2020, a lot of the ways that we communicated were shut off. A lot of us spent months without new work to show. A lot of us spent a lot of time concentrating on keeping ourselves and our families healthy, which we should have been doing. We also lost connection with a lot of people. And to be fair, the vast majority of the relationships that we had were probably just on the surface. And I think it's fair to say that many relationships boiled down to a heart-shaped smash and maybe an occasional comment here or there. Now in late 2020, a new app came out called Clubhouse, and it slowly began to change things. It was an app that was based on voice and had a singular one photo of yourself. That was it. You can only get in the Clubhouse also by invitation. I was invited by my buddy Tashawn Jackson in November of 2020, and for the first month, I had no real clue how I would even incorporate it into my online life. But if I could describe Clubhouse, it is probably part podcast, part call-in show, and part Dear Abby. Some of the rooms immediately turned me off because the vast majority were money grab rooms about making six and seven figures. I personally do not find those rooms rewarding because it assumes everyone's goal is to make money. While money is necessary, it is not everything. So I got on for a few days and did not touch Clubhouse for about 35 days-ish. It wasn't until the middle part of January of 2021 that I finally was able to find the value. In January, I accidentally fell into a room about podcasting. Side note, if you have not subscribed to my podcast, The Morning Tea Podcast, please do. It'll be in the show notes. Now, I sat in this room and I listened while I was doing yard work around the house for about three hours. There were so many different types of people in that room who shared tips of their trade that I was upset that I was cutting bushes in my yard and not writing everything down. It was then that I found the real value of Clubhouse. It was sharing a space with other like-minded individuals whose processes aligned with yours and they were all heading in the same direction. I also love to help people, and I think sometimes the best way to do that is in a group setting. So in this video, I want to give you three reasons why you should be on Clubhouse today or why you should join. Now, the first reason is that you can build real, meaningful relationships with people. There's just something different responding to someone directly. You can hear their voice and their tone. It is so tough to mistake in someone's tone when you are listening to it. I feel like so much can be lost in the written word based upon perception. When you are talking to someone directly, you can either hear their passion, you can hear their regret, or that maybe you can hear that they're unsure on the topic. When we read tweets and Facebook posts or Instagram captions, sometimes we put our own internal bias on what we are reading. Now, the second reason is that there is no algorithm yet. At the moment, you have unfettered access to people that you would probably never have. Do you want to ask Gary V a question? No problem. Find a room that he's in, raise your hand, and hopefully you get brought up to the stage. You want to hear Elon Musk speak about creativity and crypto? No problem. Follow him and you'll be notified when he is on the app. Is there work of someone that you are a fanboy or fangirl over? Follow them and enter the rooms, enter their rooms to be educated on their thought process and how and why they create. There's no way around not meeting people that you admire. 
Now, the third reason is personal growth. In 2020, I spent the vast majority of the year working on personal development. It took me taking the time to invest in myself to see where my blind spots were and how they were hurting me as a creative. I worked on them and I feel a lot better about where I'm going in 2021 than I did in 2019 or 2020. However, it was a random conversation that I had with someone on Clubhouse that really helped put things in a different perspective for me. I was in a room talking about six and seven figures and why it's not everything, and a person by the name of Carl Lou came on to the stage and helped my attitudes towards something that I didn't even know that I needed. He talked about having a personal blueprint and putting things in order in my life. He said something so simple and so concise that I sat back in my chair absolutely dumbfounded. You know, it was like one of those situations where your parents have told you the same thing multiple times, but all it took was a friend to say it in a slightly different way for it to sink in. Yeah, it was just like that. It was just that simple. And my life, to be honest, is so much better off for it. So thank you, Carl, if you're watching, reading, or if you're listening to this. The second part of this is how I record my interviews on Clubhouse for my podcast. So I'm going to get into that gear, but it's kind of like one of those ways of like killing two birds with one stone. But wait a minute. I've never seen one person kill one bird with one stone. What a stupid analogy. Anyway, let me show you, so let me show you the equipment that I'm using and how I'm getting sound from my phone to my computer so that way I can edit it later for my podcast. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you watching this. Hopefully, if you like it, subscribe to this channel. Uh, hit that little bell notification. But I'm going to jump into the equipment that I'm using. I hope this is beneficial and helpful to you. And I will see you guys in the next video. Now time for the voiceover. Peace. Hey, guys. What's going on? It's me, Tim. And I am back with... I want to share like this video with you guys. It's going to be pretty quick with how I record my clubhouse conversations to turn them into podcasts now it is a two prong issue one how do you get your iphone to record onto a recording device and how you also uh, get it with little to no latency between when you're talking and how you can get a better microphone anyway i am just talking all over the place let me get right to it so what I use is a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, and from that, I go into a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch, like the headphone jack that you normally get, to an i uh, lightning port adapter that goes into my phone. That gets recorded on its own separate channel. And then from there, I take an XLR to my Shure SM7B and plug that into my microphone so that way I can have uh, just a better quality audio so it's less work for me to do uh, at a later point. And then from there, how I hear the person on my iPhone is I use a just a pair of headphones that has a quarter inch uh, on it. So I have a pair of Shure SRH840s. That is what I use to kind of actually monitor the conversation coming from my iPhone that's going into the Focusrite that then is then coming out using USB-C or a Thunderbolt cord into my Mac that then goes into Logic Pro X, which I record two separate channels. One channel is being used to record my voice, just my voice by itself. And then the other is being used to record the audio that is coming from my iPhone. Now it doesn't have my voice on it. I'm only recording my voice on my channel. And then the voice that's coming from the iPhone from the person I'm interviewing is then going directly into the channel so that way I get two super clean separate things and that way I can also kind of dial the volume if I need a little extra volume on the Scarlett 2i2 but that's really it I found it to be super easy I need to give a huge thumbs up heads up and a shout out to my friend Millie from the Change by the Degrees podcast that helped me kind of figure this out because when I was trying to do it myself I was having mad crazy latency but she helped me out. So I just want to make sure you give her a shout out. Make sure you follow our podcast. That's it, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye.